Hello and welcome to Brooks TV. I'm Rosie Tapner. And I am Davy Versluis. Coming up in this week's episode. A new society opens at Oxford Brooks University. Oxford is cooking as a vegan festival comes to town. And what does leave in the EU have to do with peace? But first, on the 18th of March, Oxford Brooks held the workshop Sea of Humanity at the Oxford Human Rights Festival to understand the migration crisis. Many went to the event to listen to talks about the issues migrants face and who the speakers think are responsible for British current attitude to migrants. The workshop Sea of Humanity is one of the events in Oxford Human Rights Field Festival in 2017 and it focuses on migration crisis to explore how this shapes public and state responses on domestic and international scale and try to understand the root causes underlying the migration crisis. Lots of migrants face a lot of racism, they face a lot of hatred because of the way media portrays them. They're also facing extremely difficult conditions of hunger, cold, um, lack of anywhere to live. They've fled war, they're tr extremely traumatised, but at the same time, like, they're really resilient um, and they have a lot to give. Um, and, um, yeah, I think there's a lot that the media has done and the government has done in order to create conflict and create tension and to divide people in order to yeah, strip people of their humanity and stop people from joining in society. According to BBC News, more than a million migrants and refugees crossed into Europe in 2015, compared with just 280,000 the year before. The scale of the crisis continues, with more than 135,000 people arriving in the first two months of 2016. The crisis isn't in, in the UK, we, we're just trying to, in my opinion, we're trying to bat it off, you know, put it out, out there, um, keep it away from us. So I think it's just trying to, you know, say we want to be part of this, share the Share responsibility. The interactive workshop explores the sea of humanity photographic element of our home expansion, looking at the thing of hopes and the truth about migration crisis from volunteers and activities on the front line. People aren't necessarily re recognizing refugees yet, giving them, always giving them, you know, lawyer advice and always kind of support is, um, is generally good. And especially children, it's about. The aim of the workshop is to raise awareness about a range of human rights concerns among students and the wider Oxford community. Xin Yu Huang from Brooks TV. A new society has emerged at Oxford Brooks, the Pakistan society which opened with a surprise special guest. The societies of Oxford Brooks can help students from other countries to ease into their student lives away from home. Our reporter went to find out more. The Pakistan Society is meant to serve as a platform for new students so that they will be able to feel at home. Muhammad Farooqi illustrated the need for building this community. We previously had Oxford uh, Pakistan Society in Oxford University, but because they're not really active, we thought it would be much better if we started something more related to Brooks. And uh, that can help st uh, students at uh, Brooks who are Pakistani and Kashmiri so that we can promote our interests and we can uh, actually convince and do events that uh, matter to us. Uh, because the culture is completely different in UK and they don't really well integrate with the culture because it's completely different. So we thought it would be much better if we bring in some Oxfordshire community, uh, Pakistanis who are already residing in Oxford, uh, in, uh, Oxford and uh, students who come first time to Oxford, so that would help uh, all of them. Pakistan has been through lots of problems in the past, but Afia Bhatti elaborated that Pakistan is developing. The perception that people have about Pakistan from three years ago, it has completely changed. The economy is developing, the GDP is going up. So yes, we just want to spread awareness that things are getting better. 
We ask the ex-Lord Mayor of Oxford why it's taking so long for a society like this to exist. I think it's just, the reason might be internal reason of the students. They didn't get together. So it's never too late. Now they have realized that it is important to get together and have a society and have their voice to be heard in the community and in the community. So I think still it's not too bad. I mean, it's not too long. And uh, I think we should appreciate and we should encourage them that although it's late, but it's never too late. One objective of society is to engage Kashmiri students. Uh, unfortunately, there is no society that protects the uh, interests of Kashmiri students. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, protect their interests as well along with other Pakistanis. And while there are many Kashmiris residing in UK, this would act as a great bridge between the two uh, states, Pakistan and Kashmir. The society has received many blessings from those important figures who attended, one of which suggested an activity he would like the society to enact. Cricket match with the community, so hopefully that's in the pipeline. The Oxford Brooks uh, Pakistan Society versus local community. Cricket match for a charity, charitable cause in the summer. This is Dan Haddadin reporting for Brooks TV News. If you were thinking of becoming a vegan, you might think it hard to find something more than just vegetables and cereals. But even though meat isn't on the menu, a recent vegan festival showed you can still have delicious hot dogs, pizzas and pies. Let's see what happened. There are so many people lined up for the Oxford Vegan Festival, which is organized by Far Place Animal Rescue Centre. I come from Far Place Animal Sanctuary. Um, we do 19 festivals across the UK. It's a no-kill animal sanctuary. Um, so I think we get a lot of guests coming because they like to give the money to a good cause. We have Love and Hut who do vegan fish and chips, which really surprises people because they don't realise the alternative foods that you being vegan, you're not missing out on anything. There's so much. You open up your taste buds to a whole new world. This exciting event includes vegan bar, vegan food, and different kinds of stores that are selling amazing products. We're here because I've been a vegan for just over a year and it's the first event that I've heard of that's going on in Oxford so I thought it would be amazing to be a part of something with so many people with a common interest and I think veganism really is like the way forward so just to see how many people are here and all the different options for food and clothing and jewellery, everything, all the products here are amazing. There's more than just vegetables and boring you know cereals for vegans there's plenty of options you just have to look for them yeah. and uh, there's plenty I mean there's so much inspiration going on about all the different you know foods that combination food combinations that you can do with simple foods so it's really great to see there are also some short talks films and cooking demos included in this fantastic event People are happy to sharing the feelings of being vegan and encourage others to join them. What I'm doing, I'm doing this vegan, being vegan myself for the past uh, eight, nine years to be vegan. People asking me last time when they interview, say, why are you vegan? What made you be vegan? I say, I saw the light. Like innovating in food, making a million different recipes. With the bread, make it look like a bread, brown bread. It takes time, but one day we will win. It is really surprising that there are plenty of choice of vegan food and a lot of overwhelming products that actually can protect animals. Chi Zheng Ho from Brooks TV. Now arts an, is an important creative part of life that brings color and reflection onto topics artists choose to commit to canvas. Our reporter went to Cali Oxfordshire to find out more. Funding for creative arts has suffered from government cuts over the years. Artists, however, have reacted innovatively by coming together and fighting to spread awareness about their talents by running their own events, such as markets and fairs. We have come to the East Oxford Independent Art Market to see how and what it takes to organize such an event. Uh, Fusion Arts, which is a local charity, an arts charity, um, and we, I use the studio here to make ceramics as well, um, which is what I've got on sale. Uh, so in my spare time, I make pots and uh, decorate a lot of ceramics, um, try and do it a few times a week. And I've used this space a lot, so I thought it would be nice to make the most of it and get a lot of other makers and local craftspeople and creative types to come and 
show people what they make. Could get funding, yeah. Um, but I'm not, I don't really, I don't know too much about that. But with Fusion, they kind of, uh, like, yeah, that's probably their role as the venue. And we spoke to some of the participating artists and they told us what it takes to make their crafts. So they're all hand-thrown, um, and you make them, and you let them dry a little bit, and turn them to make them into, you, you cut off the excess clay to make them into a nice shape. So you might turn the bottom so that it's nice when you put it down, and then you fire them. And then they're all glazed. Now, all of these are stoneware. I do street art and I do collage art. Um, this is all uh, collage and hand painted with markers, so it's all handmade. Nothing here has been done by computer. <laughs> We're from Oxford Brooks Uni, fine arts students, fundraising for our degree show Carbon. And we're basically selling lots of prints and postcards from students in third year, um, raising money for setting up, installing, building lots of things for the degree show. Participants at the event also give their opinions about the importance of art and culture on the society. Focus too much on things that can be bought in shops, in mainstream shops. And actually it's really nice to have things that are homemade, that last a bit longer, that have a bit more character to them. It's great to see so many uh, different stalls and different people from artists from the local area. Oxfordshire County Council are initiating further cuts on the arts and culture sector by the proposed closure of Oxford City Council. In response, local artists in Oxfordshire are coming together to run their own independent art market and with no certainty as to whether these courts of closure will actually take place, local art still remains an integral part of culture and society. I am Samuel Okide, reporting Brooks TV. Still to come. Still to come. One beekeeper tells us what Brexit means for bees. And one society comes forward to show their pole position. Welcome back. Well, joining us now are two master students who study motorsport engineering. This is Everett Diamond and this is William Carlson. Thank you for joining us. So um, you have your own company, you're starting up your own company. Um, Everett, what made you want to start your own business and why this particular one? What was your inspiration? Just to explain a bit about your company. So Will works at a, a company, a Slade's Garage, and he noticed a gap in the market per se. It's an independent garage and having a problems managing their parts inventory a bit. And so uh, we were working together, uh, studying engineering, and we found this program that we could develop to help them manage that gap. And uh, it's always good to be your own boss. So if we could make that into a company, that'd be a great opportunity. Yeah, sounds a really good idea. Um, there are many, obviously, established part kind of suppliers already out there. How do you think you're going to be unique? What can you offer that they can't, that you're going to be able to get into the market? Well, I suppose I should clarify. I mean, we are not supplying parts ourselves. We okay. are just a management system for those parts. So we're at the moment in talks with someone called Eurospares, a very big company here in the UK, to offer them a chance to be a part of our business. Okay and we just give the independent garages a way to connect with them. Oh, that's really interesting, actually. So how are you going to um, intend to help these independent garages? You know, how are you going to help them with their software or bringing in any technology? How are you going to help them specifically? Yeah, I'll let Will answer that question. I think he's <laughs> good on that. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, of course Sorry. I can. So how, how are you going to help the um, independent companies and, you know, actually get the technology in? Are you going to bring technology in for them? How are you going to help them specifically? Well, from my experience when I was at Slade's Garage, it seems like it's quite limited at the moment. There are two competitors at the moment which are Autodata and Dragon2000, and they don't really seem to give them any kind of training or any kind of help guide on how to use it. It's very old-fashioned, and for people our age, it seems very bizarre. So what we would like to do is actually go to them and walk them through how to use it properly, or even have them come to our base and we have, I don't know, lectures or something like that, just to give them a bit more guidance and a bit more understanding of how it works, because at the moment it's just not good enough. 
That's a really good idea. And is that going to help with any of the costs? Um, I read that you know there are a lot of costs that go up, and you can help them come down. You company claim that they can help all those costs come down. Will that that help in any way? Yeah. So one approach that we're going to take is uh, not only help the companies manage their own garages, but then take that data of what parts work well, what parts don't work well, maybe what parts fail more often, and go back to the manufacturer and kind of big data analytics and say. You know, these parts have a tendency to fail in this type of car and not in this type of car. And that will essentially translate into like less repairs that the garages have to do. They'll get more work from their customers because their cars will break down less. Oh, so hopefully brilliant. that's the that's the other big ticket item we're trying to push with our company. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having me both yeah. here today. It's been really great to talk to you and good luck Thanks. with your company. Cheers. Thank you. A country is abuzz with questions as to what a post-Brexit Britain will look like. One question that is flying back and forth is what will happen to honeybees if pesticide regulations are relaxed? Be warned, Brexit is coming. Could the lifting of EU regulations on certain pesticides spell the end for British bees? March 29th is the given date when Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty is said to be triggered. During Britain's exit negotiations, many questions that have been asked of what Britain will become will be answered including one that has many concerned for the future of one of the UK's most beneficial insects to agriculture. EU members once voted to ban a certain number of pesticides when they found them harmful to bees. But among the numbers voting against pesticides, Britain was not among them. One beekeeper of over 30 years explained his Brexit concerns. There has been a ban um, that's still present by the EU the current ones that are the worry are the neonicotinoids, which, as I understand, are largely used as seed treatment. The huge use, certainly since the last war, of pesticides um, can only have a detrimental effect. Most of those pesticides are designed to hit insects. The bee is an insect. But a representative of an agricultural supplier of the UK had this to say. So um, our view has always been that neonicotinoid seed treatments are a much better way of controlling insects and certainly a darn sight better for bees than going out there spraying insecticides. The worry amongst a lot of beekeepers if Brexit does take place and farmers do as they say they want to do and create their own uh, rules, bylaws, use of things like neonicotinoids and not being controlled by the EU, um, what does that mean for beekeepers? Who, who takes the priority? If UK agriculture is put at a disadvantage in terms of competitiveness because of a reduction in subsidies, we argue that the government could look at making uh, farmers more competitive in other ways. And some of those ways um, might include the use of things like neonicotinoid insecticides. In all aspects, I am appalled at Brexit. <laughs> I think it is a absolutely devastating, ridiculous, stupid and terrible <laughs> issue that uh, we're now landed with in, in many ways, not just bees. Now the continued use of pesticides and their effect on British wildlife is an ongoing topic amongst agricultural researchers. But after many years of investigation, it seems neither camp is willing to budge on the topic. So should the issue be raised during Brexit negotiations, to be or not to be, that is the question to which the answer will be one we must all live with. This is David Bullock, Brooks TV, Oxford. Moving on to an exciting event. Oxford Brooks and Reading University face off against each other in a hard-fought rugby, rugby match. Spirits were high among players and spectators alike. Our reporter took us on a journey throughout the game. Let's have a look. <laughs> On a very windy afternoon, Oxford Brooks and Reading University first teams played quite a tough match. Both gave an outstanding performance. Reading took an early lead scoring in the first 10 minutes. The game, which was attended by a lot of fans for the two top teams, was a big challenge. Some players are even playing their last match for their team. I think the biggest challenge for us is, is fo not focusing on us in our performance. I think focusing, what we tend to focus on the away, the opposition, it sometimes detracts away from what we're trying to do. So that will be our biggest challenge. We're not worried about whether they're the league above, we're not worried about, about what they can bring, we're just focusing on, on, on our performance. 
Well, this week in particular, we've had three training sessions, uh, Monday night, Wednesday, and uh, yesterday. So, you know, in terms of our preparation, it's been probably a little much more in depth than it would have been um, for a normal Bucks fixture on a Wednesday. We've been able to cover a lot of stuff across the whole team, uh, so first team, second team, and third team. Uh, so, yeah, we've, we've prepared as well as we can. Unfortunately, Reading's coach was not available to tell us about their preparation for this rough match. However, it seems that Reading's team were putting a lot of effort in their preparation and showed their best. Although it was a strong game, Brooks took over ending this thrilling match 17-7. Yes! A victory. We just came up, we, we rose to the occasion. It was a big game for us. Uh, we've had an up and down season um, and we just proved it today. We proved that, that we can do, do what we do better. So it's a bit scrappy. We had the ball for about 10% of the game. When we did, the dangerous hill to try at the start, but apart from that, we just weren't in it. Just weren't in it. Everything, let a lot. Like, they, they rocked up, they're two leagues above us now, thinking they're going to walk all over us. They don't just stand up in front of us. Like, it doesn't matter how big they are, you can stand up and take them on. It's good fun. A really good performance. It was a classic varsity game. Uh, I think it's the first time we've beat Reading, uh, especially I graduated last year, but so we've never beaten them in the time I've been here. Um, but the game overall, Really hard contested as usual, like it is every year. Um, Reading put an absolute performance in, an absolute shift. Uh, they're a big bunch of boys. Uh, but yeah, the lads came together really well and they got the win still. Gave our best shot, but it didn't uh, work. I think it was a lot of, you know, it's a good game. Yeah, they never underestimated the position. It was Brooks, you know, fair play to them, they came out today and they really gave it their all. Fair play, they got the rewards. So. It felt un unbelievable. It's like third year perspective. It's the best game of rugby I've played for Brooks. Um, best and last, um, it's just been un unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, unreal. Guys inside, getting right behind us, it's great, whole club out, you can't look at the best top of the top world. Yeah. Brooks' team made sure to give a lovely cheer to their rivals for the great match. Congrats to Brooks. Hard luck, Reading. This is Dina Salah, Brooks TV. And finally, we bring you to the first ever public live event of Brooks Paul Fitness Society. It was the first showcase of pole sports held at Brooks in the Union Hall. One of Oxford Brooks' new sports societies recently held an event in Headington. They call themselves Pole Fitness Society, and its members use a pole to train their bodies and develop their fitness. This exciting event was the first public showcase of how their training has progressed. Surprisingly, only just under two weeks. So it was a really last minute decision putting on this showcase. And so our performers have only had two weeks to practice. I, just an hour before the show was our first run through. The quality of the performance was amazing. I looked on as the performance stretched, contorted and clung to the pole in ways that defied belief. I thought it was amazing, all the performances were amazing. I know they were a lovely bunch as well, but I thought they really put their hearts out and they did uh, an amazing job tonight. Pole fitness has resulted in an international association for amongst other responsibilities, aiming to make the sport an Olympic event. Yeah. I'd definitely say pole fitness is a sport. You only had to see what happened today to know that what happens at pole fitness and what um, our polers do is really, really extraneous and it takes it out of you. Like, there's, there's no doubt that it's a sport. It will be interesting, but judging it, it would be very controversial, I would say. But yeah, that would be interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, so there's quite a few pole competitions, I believe, that are out at the moment. Um, but because Brooks is reasonably new, hopefully we aim to compete next year. When the event came to the close, the onlookers seemed happy to have seen the society's performance and doubtlessly looked forward to next one. If opinion counts towards coming an Olympic sport, then these young people may well be the athletes of the future. This is Keitachiko Hudson, Brooks TV, Headington. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Remember you can watch our previous episodes on the Oxford YouTube channel. See you next time. Goodbye.